Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Get Up and Dab podcast, the show where we interview interesting parents doing interesting things. This could be anything from a super duper tech dad to a busy business mummy blogger. Let's get up and Today on the show we have the amazing Zara Dawson. Who is Zara Dawson? She is a competitive female bodybuilder, two times Northern Ireland competition winner. She is a fitness biomechanics trainer. She has set up and run her own fitness club. And most importantly, she's a mum. So Zara, thanks for joining us on the show. Can you first of all start off by telling us how many kids you have and how old are they? Okay, so uh, I am the mum to one gorgeous little ginger princess. She is called Amber and um, she is four years old. Okay. Uh, I think I saw on your profile you referred to her as a bit fairy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just definitely, um, I know what people say it comes, it's all we girls, but definitely I think it's in the, the redhead. Um, there's definitely like a crazy temperament I, there. I have a redhead as well. Well, how do you, well how's uh, yours? I can, can be angry. <laughs> very, <laughs> very. Uh, so... When you grew up, or when your kids grew up, what, what, how do you want to tell them what you've done, what you've done with your life? Well, I know, like myself, I've, the last few years have been very challenging, you know, so managing your own business and being a mum at the same time. And I think that, like, when Amber's older, I'll be able to tell her that, you know, that I worked very, very hard to ensure that we got to the point that we are at now. Um, it's actually really kind of rewarding at times that Amber now with her being four that she's she's actually nearly in the understanding that she, that you go to work to make money or you know and that's why we have um nice nice things or you know that we've got you know a lovely home and she can have nice clothes and I I want her you know to truly appreciate that everything that we done was for her and even at times that, um, you know, she's maybe saying, like, Mama, you know, don't be going back to work again. Like, let's just stay with me. That I know that deep down she said, like, I know you have to go. And, you know, even though she only is four. And I think with her having that mindset now that when she gets a bit older, she'll say, like, you know, like, you know, I know you've done what you did. And um, and that she, she will be grateful for it. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, for me, like, I always kind of see that you kind of have to lead by example because you have to make yourself happy as well and mm-hmm. show that to your kids. Definitely. So that when they grow up, I mean, that they have to be happy too. And yep. you know, that's important, you know. I'd agree with you on that because even um, like my actual past, I actually graduated as an environmental health officer, mm-hmm. not anything to do with fitness. But I, you know what I mean? I wasn't actually, I, think, I wasn't thinking this is what I want to do, you know. And I think that's, you know, as you're saying, lead by example, that when Amber grows up she'll be like well do you know what you changed and you're doing something that you're really passionate about and yeah it was challenging but you did it for a reason and it all panned out okay. Brilliant and I mean how did that how did that transition happen from <laughs> environmental uh, health officer to fitness? Um, started with done my degree in environmental health um, got my first job was working up in Uri Moore and District Council was there for a couple of years and during that time frame I started getting really into the gym and then that's when the bodybuilding started to happen so mm-hmm. while I was working I was an officer I was like competing and loving being in the gym but then when I went off for maternity leave with all the councils amalgamating together so they were making the super councils and um, any temporary workers got let go and I unfortunately was one of them and when she was, when I was off for her maternity leave, I was like, what am I going to do? I was like, I don't really want to go back to environmental health. I was like, I don't want a nine to five job. And at that point I had done my fitness instructing the year before. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to work in the gym. I'm going to, you know, do a few hours and, you know, means mm-hmm. I can be at home more. And, and then I wasn't expecting it to kind of kick off the way it did. And I was very, very fortunate that my bodybuilding background kind of gave me that extra wee edge or that wee push that all of a sudden I was just flat out and here I am for nearly four years later. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Can you kind of explain to me how that how that journey went from bodybuilding to where you are now? Um, like I remember seeing on one of your posts, it was like year one. Yeah. Uh, 
what was that again? How did that so go? So year one um, was <laughs> my husband. Actually, well, it was my husband at the time. Took me for a date, and we went to the Ulster Hall to watch one of the shows. And I remember sitting in the audience thinking, "What oh, are these people? I've got no clothes on." Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, thinking that's amazing. Um, the following year, we went to support a friend in Italy who was competing in the same show, but it was at the world level, and that's when he proposed to me. Then. So, then the following year, we're back round in Northern Ireland and I actually was competing and that's the first year that I won. Brilliant. Then, where were we? Then we got married. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, 12 days later, we were having a baby. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. And it just kind of went quick. So then we're in do. I had her and within nine months later, I was back on stage again and I regained my Northern Ireland title. Where were we after that? I competed that whole year and it was a hard year. Like... I don't know. I think it just felt like I wanted to prove it to myself mm. and I'd done a few shows that year while she was small. And then all of a sudden I was like, I'm done with this. Yeah. But lucky enough, they kind of said, they actually were like, you know, we'd really be interested in you coming on board as a judge. So kind of the last few years I've been awesome. act- yeah, doing that. Brilliant, brilliant. And like, what was it like going from, uh, I mean, when you're pregnant, obviously your body the way it goes I mean how how difficult was it going from like from the first time you won to the second time you maybe won very two different experiences um obviously like pre-baby um you're I was younger my body hadn't gone through as much and um even like things for like for a bodybuilding show it's about obviously it's your physique you know it's how how well the best it can be and I'd had a baby, you know, and my skin and everything had changed and, you know, that trying to get into the same shape again, even though my body had changed, was was so much harder. But it was really strange because I had never intended to compete again. You know, when she was, I suppose she was, what, six or seven months old, I kind of was that busy with my new found um, PT business that, like, I started getting into really good shape really quickly but it was because I had that on the sideline and it kind of just happened. Um, I never, I think that anyone who um, is trying to get into shape after having a baby, it wouldn't be as quick or as, as natural as that because that was my job and that's why it made it easier. So any other lady who's maybe thinking, well, how did you do that so quick? You know, it was, it was hard, but I was doing, you know, exercise and then my, my PT business on the side. So there was like, I was doing double nearly, which isn't normal or recommended yeah. <laughs> really. But, um, yeah. I mean, no, it's great to see because uh, for me, get up and that is almost like, oh, your whole life changes when you have a baby, but, mm-hmm. and you almost kind of lose something. But yeah. for me, get up and that is kind of like, you still want to keep everything. You know, yes. you still want to keep parts of yourself as uh-huh. well as thing. And it's great to see that you've been able to do that, you know. Yeah, no, I think people do lose their identity very quickly, you know, or, or you know, so you have to, like, well, keep those wee interests that you had. And that's why I think I felt like I had something to prove to myself. And I'm glad I did it, but it's it's behind me now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what would you say is your favourite get up and mum thing to do with the kids? What would you, What's the one thing where you go, you know what? Tough day, I'm way here. Um, so what's funny... And I look at my, my sisters are one of those people who gets up and like, they're like, right, what are we doing? We're going for this big drive, we're doing this. And I go, oh, that actually just makes me tired thinking about that. Mm-hmm. We have quite hectic lives, you know, like I work long hours and unsociable ones. Um, my husband's self-employed as well. So our household's very, you know, the business is like a big drive. We actually just love doing nothing, you mm-hmm. know. So see on a morning that I can say, Amber is always asking, right, what are we doing today or where am I going? You know, um, she's checking to say, well, am I going to nursery today or am I going to see Nanny? And I love being able to say nothing. It's, like, it's just me and you. And she'd be like, you know, oh, what are we going to do? And I love just being able to not have to rush out the door, you know, just to be able Relax, to yeah. sit in her jammies, you know, and I can sit with my coffee. Me and her can sit and snuggle on the sofa while she's watching one of her YouTube channels that she's addicted to. And I love that. And then if we think, well, she she loves going swimming, you know, we things like that. Nothing, nothing too far away. Just kind of staying around the house and just spending like good quality time without like the the stressful push of having Going to get out, out yeah. you know. I know. It can be stressful sometimes just trying to get somewhere and cues mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. <laughs> just put me over the edge. So uh, what what are you highly interested in right now? What are you, what, what's kind of interesting you right now? With 
like hobbies or like business hobbies or... business life kids anything do you know what like it's really sad that i don't actually really have any other hobbies apart yeah. from kind of work and like family there's never really i suppose there's not really a lot of time um to kind of fit anything else in i'm quite like simple that i i just quite like the the relaxing side of things but with myself is that i'm i have through my whole like fitness journey and with working that going from the bodybuilding side of things to where i am now what i would be interested in mostly in is like keeping myself fit and mobile you know mm-hmm. Being a bodybuilder, I wasn't really that mobile. Like, you're really stiff what, and what rigid. Mean, what do you mean mobile? Trying to get out of the house? <laughs> no, like, like so, like, um, kind of, you lose your flexibility. Okay. You know, okay. so we talk about how mobile you are around your joints and, like, being able to right, confidently okay. do something without something feeling, oh, that's really tight. Or So I've, like, my body's changed. And, yeah, I'm not in the same good shape that I was in them, but I feel so much better. And that would be a real interest of me. And I love, that's why... Um, I went and done the biomechanics diploma okay. because it's all like assessment of your shoulders, hips, knees and feet. And it's made me like, it's kind of like rebirth my ideas. Of, well, what is exercise and what is movement? And I, I'm always sitting thinking of weird and quirky ways that like I can get people moving without realizing that they're actually helping themselves. You know, it's like a more fun way to do things. What do you mean? Like, like getting them to exercise without exercising yeah like maybe? you know like it's silly things like you know well getting them to rotate in a certain way or picking up a ball and moving to certain places and they'd be like well what's this doing it's just like well you're using all the functional movements that you would during the day like you know when you're reaching into a cupboard or doing this and it's it's those kind of things that we should be doing you know so before when i was doing bodybuilding you were doing you know strict movements in a in a pattern that probably doesn't mimic everyday life you know if you're pressing something up above your head constantly that's not really what you do every day you kind of maybe do this or across the ways so it's kind of those things are really interesting me at the moment and that's i've got big plans in the next six months of how i'm going to bring that all in so uh, so what do you think you've learned from what you've been doing how you're going to teach your kids or what what have you learnt from what you do uh, that you really want to teach your kids uh, and this could be yeah. from a business perspective bodybuilding perspective you know anything i think it's, i'll chat to you on like kind of like a healthy perspective or so go on what i was already touching about you know bodybuilding is a certain mindset um and i'm not that's not my focus anymore and I sit because I'm working with people, you know, on a daily basis. A lot of them are parents, and you hear about different um, situations they're going through where, like, you know, their children are worried about their weight, or you know, because maybe they're they're you know they're more on the obese side of um, the spectrum or the other side, and it's actually really sad, you know. And I'm sitting thinking, it's like, is that like I don't remember being like that when I was that young, and I. I'm because Amber like knows that I work in a gym and like sometimes she's got to come in the odd time you know she come in with daddy and she's got to sit and pick something up and she's starting to understand you know what you know what exercise is and I'd be like right come on Amber we're going to do some squats and I want her to to have that in her head that like being healthy is really important and um it's like one funny thing that we have in our household is that like um we would <laughs> squeeze each other in the hips and like you know what we call it our fatties because I want her to really you know feel comfortable that it's okay to have like you know we wobbly bits you know and just to be normal because and I like a lot of a lot of people are too much worried about their self-image especially parents and if that's the role model for their children like that's that worries me so I'm kind of so I want I'm just trying to teach her that um she can have fun you know with me doing exercise and that hopefully that um, she's going to follow in behind me and do the same and not like take it too seriously. I, I don't, I'm not saying I would never promote bodybuilding because I do, because I love it, but I would rather her, you know, think the way I'm thinking now that like movement yeah. is, is for just like function and that da- daily life, you know, making sure that you're fit and healthy. And see in terms, would you find that a lot of parents, you would find yourself talking about that to a lot of parents? Do you know, it's... It's probably that, not especially some, their clients maybe that you're working with i would never like if if a client is confiding in me about like their own children i probably wouldn't 
comment on it because I don't feel like it's maybe my position to because I'm not like trained in that kind of area and because that would be like a big nutrition side but what I do find is that a lot of parents are saying to me is there anything that my kids could do could they come to this class or could they you know do you know of anything at, at in their age range in the area and there's really not yes kids do exercise in school but obviously once they get up to a certain and age it kind of drops off are these age Adrian kids are they maybe younger kids or maybe older like 11 plus or probably or your 11 to 16 that 11, really 16. really kind of um hard time when things change because mm. you know they start to hit teens and they don't really care I know my nephew over in England like my sister's like he just doesn't want to do anything I've tried everything you know he just wants to sit and sit on the floor playing Lego or on his iPad and like I, I'm sure you know yourself like when we were that age like you were out running around you know yeah. and we don't mm-hmm. have that now and there doesn't seem to be enough for kids to do I know there is teams and like football clubs but maybe a lot of kids don't fit into that yeah. you know and I have so now like I'm actually getting a lot of mums bringing um their teenagers with them okay. um and they're doing it together and it's lovely to see because they're actually encouraging each other or it actually sometimes there's been some of the the elder teenagers said look I'm coming and I really want to get mum in you know so it's actually the young ones bringing the older ones in which is just fantastic Brilliant. so what age groups would you be working with then um well primarily like my my normal clientele would range from 18 up to about 50 um but I do have some plans coming ahead that that will be incorporated in a slightly younger age range um, from that 11 to 16 bracket. Okay, brilliant. And, you know, you're really busy. You know, you, you've obviously did loads and you're still working away. I mean, how do you, how do you find getting that uh, mum work balance? <laughs> um, well, it's definitely a lot better than it used to be. But so starting off, you know, with my own business was like any, I think, new business. You're really busy and you're putting every hour you can into it because you want it to be a success. And definitely the balance wouldn't have been there at the beginning. Um, Because I've been, you know, what nearly four years at this, I'm in a better position now that I can actually go, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying yes to anymore. I'm going to have that day. So I'm I'm fortunate, and that is one of the good things about being self-employed, that I'm not stuck to Monday, 9 to 5, that, yes, I do maybe a couple of 12-hour shifts in the week, but that means that I can actually have a full day off with Amber, you know, um, and that's great because then I actually don't feel as guilty. Not that you should feel guilty about running your own business because you have to do what you have to do to support the family, but... Um, I'm actually able to take that little bit of time if I need to, even with the flexibility of my own schedule. Like I could, like I could just move clients about and take a wee bit extra time if I needed to. But um, the balance isn't always there. And yes, with my hours being slightly unsociable, like I am out. I work three, three late nights, so to maybe eight or nine. Um, mm. And Amber will be long sleeping, and that is tough. Um, but I know there's people who are a lot worse yeah. off or you know doing longer shifts i mean i've been in a similar situation yourself where i'm where everything's kind of moved around you know mm-hmm. i would maybe be filming in the evening and then i'd maybe take during a day off or just take a full day off yeah. and again sometimes there's full weeks where i'm doing 12 mm-hmm. hour shifts sometimes but uh, i think for me i think it would be even more difficult if i was working nine to five and trying mm-hmm. to organize stuff i just i just think that would be harder as such and i think it's yeah. easier maybe there's just maybe there's a balance maybe it's because i've never done it before yeah you know? but even like i sit and think like people who do work nine to five monday to friday like it's easy if say if i have an pr- appointment for myself i can kind of fit that in exactly and not have to do that on a saturday when i'm with amber so people who don't have that luxury they have so much more to fit in you know on their day off which is probably more stressful or you know they can't maybe get as much done so they're definitely the balance is there but it's kind of just a wee bit all over the yeah, show <laughs> yeah i know i know uh so you've been doing what you're doing now for how many years uh it's coming up to four four years so during that time what have you found difficult uh, especially with becoming a mum well, there'll be a couple of difficulties <laughs> oh yeah so um, go for it I would say, well, the first one's probably taking time off. So Mm. I suppose that comes into the whole balance thing. But when you know you're you're self-employed, nobody's 
kind of paying you to take time off and also it's more like you feel like you have a duty to mm-hmm. your customers you know so as a guy you know if I say I'm taking a few days they're like what am I going to do like where, where am I going to go yeah. so you're like well sure I'll come in for a couple hours you know and you do do that and like that kind of repetitiveness you know that pattern has kind of been going on the last few years and so that would be one kind of difficulty um the other would be sometimes doubting I was like what why am I doing this? You know, yeah. would Amber be better if I did just go back to environmental health? You know, like, and like, would she be better off if I was just there every day? And mm-hmm. um, it's having those wee doubts thinking, why am I doing this? You know, like, is, you know, am I doing right by her all the time? Um, but I'm kind of, I'm, I, I'm glad that I've, I've persevered with it because if you stop at what your passion is, then you're not going to be overly unhappy, you know, yeah. in your other job. And, your happiness is your mental health and I think that's really important as a parent like if I'm if I'm not feeling strong in my mind that's gonna you know ref- come into my household and Amber's gonna feel that so for her to see that I'm um, passionate and have a drive about what I'm doing I think that's you know a much better way to be. Yeah exactly I completely agree with you uh, I mean you have to look after yourself and you have to show them that you're looking after yourself mm-hmm. so that they will do the same whenever you kind of let them go. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So it is, it's all about, for me, it's all about leading, for example. Yeah. I and mean, when you say you took time, in terms of you taking time off, are you talking about your maternity? Oh, no, I mean like, um, you know, like holidays. Like holidays and stuff? <laughs> all right, okay, okay. Yeah. I know, I, yeah, I get it. So you're trying to take time off. You're always sitting there at the age going, selfie when you're self-employed. Do I, uh, you're trying not to check your email mm-hmm. and stuff and you're getting messages from yep. people and you're maybe thinking, I could sort this out in five minutes. I know. But sometimes you just have to shut down and just mm-hmm. say stuff up like, you know. Just even at night time, I'm still going checking. I'm just checking this, doing this. And it's like, I just have to keep it in my phone away. It's like, right, we can't do this. Just relax. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's hard to mm-hmm. just relax and just shut down. It's uh, it's just hard just to turn off, you know. I know. So mm-hmm. just what can you do when you love it? Do you love it? Like, That's it. You know? uh, so it's 2019. What what would you tell yourself pre-mum with the experience you have now? It's going to be really challenging. Um, I don't think anyone kind of gears you up enough or like, I don't think you really understand what parenting and being having your own business will look like. It's definitely been a lot harder than I ever thought it would be. Um Amber has been <laughs> a challenging child and it is that hair. But then a lot of it is like we joke, it's like it's myself and my husband because we've both got two strong personalities and she's just a minute version of us, amplified. <laughs> um, but I think, as I was saying there, like, you know, the difficulties in sitting thinking that, am I doing the right thing? There was a time there that I thought, as I was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Um, but I had got to a point... Um, in the journey that I thought, no, I was like, this has to change. It's like, I'm, I'm like slogging my guts here and I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere or it's not getting any easier. It's like, I can't be doing this for the next few years. But if somebody had said to me, like, you know what, just keep sticking at it, you know, um, and I'm so glad that I, I, I did. And as I was saying, I do have some plans ahead. Um, but I don't think anyone can really like I don't think because everything every journey is going to be different and every like every um child is going to be different I think that's one thing is wrong with is that like before you have kids you think it's going to be like this or you've watched other people and and their kids are like that and then when you do have your own you're going well why are yours like that like my amber doesn't do that my amber's mm-hmm. like this and there's so much you know and it's all those comparisons but everyone's situation is different mm-hmm. like nobody um like me and my husband are both self-employed so my friend you know who's got a child the same age like maybe they're not self-employed so their you know their environments can be different so their routine is going to be different and what you think is normal um is again different so I I don't think I don't know what advice I'd really give myself pre mm-hmm. because it's just just stick at it it's yeah it's going to be a challenge and you just have to keep believing that you're doing the right thing and as long as you know if I like I look at Amber I know that she is good and healthy she's really really intelligent you know all of her developments is perfect so we're doing something right you know she's a really happy child so I'm like 
I think we've, we've, we've definitely gone down the right path. You know, we're doing good by her. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, for you, what's, what's the next big thing then? Okay, so I kind of was <laughs> touching on it slightly. Um, so the last seven months, I kind of had changed my business. So I moved out of a, a big gym and went into a private studio. Um, so I've been over in the Sega Hotel. And you know what? It's been brilliant. And that I needed that kind of wee boost because I was sitting thinking I was at a point going, I need to do something here. So expanding out and branching out on my own has been really, really fantastic. Um, but then... I'm what the type of person that like I'm never sitting still. I'm thinking, well, what can I do next? What's next? You know, and the next thing did come along. Um, so I have just taken on um, Drumgore Community Centre just in Craigavon, um, and it's a fantastic building that I actually grew up in. So that was my like my childhood um, area, and I am trying to create like a community kind of family fitness centre. Okay, so at the moment, yes, I'm quite restricted in that. I don't have a lot of space in the hotel um, and yes there is some kids coming with their parents but I want to kind of push that there a little further and um, that parents will maybe be coming along and doing um, like jiu-jitsu or something in the center mm-hmm. or you know whatever it may be but I'm in a really good area like you know with there's so much residential area around here and there's so many schools and I would love to really be able to reach out to them and get um, more adults and kids coming through and um, so that's really that's actually going to be I'm opening next Monday I have a wee launch night this Friday um, and it's just I'm going to have so much space and the opportunities there are just amazing um, so it's going to be um, a busy few months I, I hope <laughs> um, but definitely um, it's for me that was the end goal this is like um the dream you know for me mm-hmm. to have this so this is definitely so as i'm so glad that i never gave up and that i kept pushing and i kept pushing for what my passion was because now i'm getting to that point where i'm going to have i'm going to have it all and um i'm going to be able to offer so many more services let's get up and If you'd like to see any more of Zara's stuff, head over to her Instagram. She's a, or Johnny, or her Facebook or anything? Uh, just Unity Fitness. Unity um, Fitness. And then the Instagram is Unity Fitness NI. And BNL Productions have produced this podcast. So if you could head over and you know like them too. So guys, thanks for listening.